Two and a half knots. I shiver. She's hungry tonight. Aye, she is that. Well, Barrett? Yes, sir. The problem with this ship is there are no problems. Could get a little boring, don't you think? Better to be busy than bored's my view, sir. Devil finds work for idle hands and all that. Something of the sort, sir. What is it? I'm not sure, sir. Shut the dampers! At 11.40 p.m., when watchouts first spotted the iceberg, orders were sent immediately to the engine room. Engine room, receiving. Understood. Stop all engines. Stop all engines! Stop all engines! Stop all engines! Stop all engines! Shut the doors! Come on, shut the doors! Shut the dampers! I said shut them down, lads! As the engines came to a stop, Titanic tried to steer clear of the approaching iceberg. Come on, shut the dampers! I said, lads, shut them down! Now drifting, it took 30 seconds until impact.
we dropped a propeller blade? I don't know, sir. We'll cut off the turbines and redirect steam to the main condensers. Hey, Shep, raise the bridge. What is it, old girl? What's the matter? One of Titanic's key safety features was now put into action. Her watertight doors were shut down, sealing off the ship's 16 compartments. Drop the dampers on those boilers! What in God's name has happened? I'm not sure, sir. Water came through for full stop, bring her up all standing, and that's it. I'm trying to raise the bridge, but I'm just getting standby. And then news forward. Nothing, sir. Where's Harvey? Slow astern. Slow astern, 11.45. Activate the reversing engines. Slow ahead. What the hell are they playing at? Says he wants the dynamos running as if nothing's happened. And what has happened? What? You think they tell a bunch of greasers? Someone said we've run aground off Newfoundland banks. And what would you know about anything? I heard that too. Just get the power up on the sets, find out what's gone wrong with the phones. That's all he said. So that's all you need to know. Telephone and lighting circuit shorter than boiler six, five, four. That can't be right. That's what I'm looking at. Funny how you get used to the noise. Don't notice it till it's gone. Like she's in dry dog. Feel that? Huh. It's down about the head, I'd say. When the iceberg hit Titanic's starboard side, it ripped along nearly 300 feet of her hull, allowing cold sea water to pour into her forward compartments. Firemen and engineers working in boiler room six were among the first to witness the flooding. Yet at this stage, they would not have known the true extent of the damage. Many of the men retreated backwards to boiler room five as Titanic's watertight doors came down, sealing off the ship's compartments one by one. Titanic's engineers now needed to clear the remaining boilers of their coal. Cold seawater hitting a fully pressurized boiler could cause a thermal explosion. Get those furnaces pulled! Put your bloody backs into it! Come on! Sir! What is it? You better see this. Shut down the cylinder drain valves when all the condensate is blown out. What's your name, son? Dylan, sir. But everybody calls me Paddy. I want you to open up this door for me, Dylan. Sure, we're not supposed to. You follow orders, don't you? Aye. I'll give him an handshake.
With each of Titanic's compartments now sealed off by her watertight doors, the senior engineers needed to get forward to find out what had happened and assess any damage. Four separate boiler rooms now separated the engine room from the incoming water towards the bow of the ship. Feel that? Feel what, sir? It's like a Turkish bath down here. She's taking water up ahead. We need to keep it shut. Close it. Barrett, what's happening? I'll take you through the hatch, sir. Seemingly cut off from the flooding, the iceberg had in fact breached a fifth compartment. A tear of just two feet within a coal bunker located in boiler room five was slowly taking water. How many are there? Five, sir. Capacity? About 250 tons an hour, I'd say. That's an estimate. And they're reversible. I mean, we can use them to bail water rather than for trimming. Absolutely, sir. Through the ash ejectors. The bilge pumps? Uh, three of those. Slightly less capacity, I'd say. Uh, 150 tons an hour, something like that. Very good. Gauge the pumps, then. Yes, sir. How many? All of them. Need a team of carpenters down here right away to take soundings. And tell them to bring shoring equipment. I need someone to go into six and report back. Shep, you go with him. Sure. Back up. My cabin would have been just down there on the left. <sighs> this isn't the Olympics, sir. No, ma'am. Is anything the matter? I felt something. Nothing's the matter. It's just routine. Probably best to go back to your cabins. Andrews? Joseph. Check the return floor rate of the burn oil. What's the news? There's a hole in the hull and she's making water. Well, 
That's what they're saying anyway. She'd be limping into New York at this rate. That's so she doesn't turn back. It doesn't look good. Not for White Star anyway. Andrews has already been there for a bit, just. Who's Andrews? Does that mean we get overtime? You're joking. Look, you signed up for a single trip at an agreed rate of pay. Yeah, all right, Karl Marx. Don't change, however long it takes her to get to New York. How'd you like to sign a six bob for a month's work? A month? How much water? What? How much? How much water is she taking? You know your alphabet, Joseph? Your ABC, do you know it, man? Your A, B, C and D. I don't follow. From the bow, she can fill all of these compartments. That's A, B, C and D. But E, compartment E, boiler room five, whatever you want to call it, that's her death sentence. But the soundings, I've carpenters in all forward compartments. I mean, she's hold, surely. The amount of water she... The amount of water is immaterial. She can take on more water, just not in this way. Her neck is in the noose. This ship will sink. They'll give her an hour, an hour and a half at most. I won't let that happen. Let me show you something. 